Okay, so Yi Hong will talk about better together, unifying data log and equality saturation. All right, thanks. Uh, yeah, so I'm Yi Hong, uh, and today I will be talking about our recent work on Agalog, which is a system that unifies uh, dialogue and equality saturation. So, uh, so the problem we study in this work is that people do equational program reasoning with equality saturation because it's fast. But current EQSAT frameworks has only a limited support for semantic analysis, which causes real world headaches. On the other hand, people do rich and composable program analysis in data log, but equational reasoning in data log is asymptotically slow. A natural question arises, can we build one system that subsumes both equality saturation and data log? The answer is yes, and we will show in this talk that in order to unify data log and EQSET, all you need are these functional dependencies and functional dependency repair. So in the rest of the talk, I will explain what this means. So let's first review some background. Uh, equality saturation, which is the idea of doing term writing with e graphs, has been very successful recently. It has been used in many domains, uh, from, big data, from big data systems to hardware, from program annotation to program synthesis. It is also getting adopted in industry projects. It is used in chip design, in database optimization, smart contracts, and web assembly. So at the core of equality saturation is a data structure called e graphs. Uh, this example e graphs represents A times 2 over 2. And if we zoom in a little bit, uh, we will see this dotted box as E classes and the solid boxes as uh, E nodes. And each E class contains a set of E nodes, and each E node has zero or more E classes as children. So this E class contains a single E node, which is A, and A has zero children. The other E nodes, such as the times and division operator there, uh, they have two children E classes. So we apply rewrite rows to this E graph and we grow the E graph. And now after the rewrite, the E class in the middle has two E nodes and it represents two terms, A times two and A left shift by one. Uh, the E class at the top represents A times two over two and A left shift one over two. So we apply for more iterations and uh, until we reach some fixed point or timeout. One thing to note here, though, is that uh, the rule x over x to 1 is actually not summed. For this rule to apply, x must not be 0. In other words, we need semantic, semantic information about x from this e graph. But how can we do this? Well, existing EQSET frameworks like AG use the so called e class analysis to support the semantic analysis over e graphs. It annotates each e class with an abstract value. For example, we can attach to each E class an interval information, which denotes the possible ranges of the expressions. And when analyses are changed, such changes are propagated up to analysis of their parent E classes. So this idea of E class analysis has been used in many projects. But it turns out that E class analysis has some limitations. For example, in E class analysis, you only allow one kind of analysis. Although it's possible to define a product analysis that combines individual analyses, this will make the implementation clunky. Moreover, e class analysis only propagate from children to parents, and this forbids certain kinds of analysis like type checking to be used, which pass context from parent to children. And finally, in frameworks like AG, analyses have to be implemented in an external imperative language as a monolithic function which is neither composable nor uh, scalable. But our insight is that analyses are rules too. So people have been expressing analyses in a declarative rule-based language called data log. And in data log, analyses are expressed as logical rules. And because they are expressed as rules, they are very flexible. For example, data logs pose the definition of multiple analyses. Uh, their definitions are modular as a set of individual rules. And these rules also compose and cooperate with each other to collectively derive more precise analyses. So here's an example rule. Uh, this rule says that if E is an expression of the form x plus y, then the lower bound of E should be the lower bound of x plus the lower bound of y. As you can see, this is very straightforward. So the question here is, can we express EQSET in data log to enjoy the rich and composable analysis in 
data log. And to do this, we need to ex express both the triggers, which are these left-hand sides, and actions, which are these right-hand sides in data log. So our previous work on relational imaging shows the first half of the story. So imaging is a problem of doing pattern matching over the e-graph. Uh, in that work, we show that they are just database queries. And this actually gives us significant speed ups. And it handles the trigger part of the story. And now, what about these actions? Well, this leads to our work on Agalog, which unifies dialog and equality saturation. So one of the key concepts in Agalog is functions. In Agalog, every table represents a function, and a relation is just a function to the unit type. With functions, we can talk about terms and equivalencies between these terms. And here's an example term writing program in Agalog. So we can define these data types with constructors in Agalog, and each constructor corresponds to a table that represents a function to the mass data type. And elements of the mass data type will be generated on demand. We can also define expressions of the mass data type. Uh, expressions are recursively inserted into uh, the database. Along the way, we introduce new elements of mass data type to denote the mapped value of each sub-expressions. Finally, we can define right rows over these terms. The first two rows here defines the commutativity and distributivity, and the last two rows define a constant folding over the addition and the multiplication operator. So here we zoom in a little bit to see how individual row behave. So this is the distributivity. It will match the left hand side with rational imaging over that database. And for each match part, uh, we track the corresponding value for each variable in the left hand side and we build the corresponding substitution. Then we apply the substitution to the right hand side and insert the right hand side from the bottom up. So Agalog will insert the two sub expressions for multiplication introduce new elements for the mass data type along the way, and then it will insert the top E node for the top level uh, addition. Now, note that the left hand side maps to the element C sub 5, and the right hand side maps to the element C sub 8. And because the rewrites are equational, we also need to make sure that the left hand side and the right hand side map to the same value. Well, to do this, uh, Agalog uses a union find, and here we use uh, here we merge C sub 5 and C sub 8 in the underlying union find data structure. So now the left hand side and the right hand side are equivalent and we are happy now. So at the core of Agalog's functional abstraction is functional dependency and the functional dependency repair. So functional dependency basically says that the arguments of a function uniquely determine the output and this is exactly what makes a function a function. But what if functional dependencies are violated? Well here's an example. Suppose we call the union operator over C sub 1 and C sub 2 here, and the union find will merge the two elements and canonicalize C sub 2 into C sub 1. Now the table have two entries, and they both have the same input arguments, C1 and C3. And this is our functional dependency violation because the same input arguments, C1 and C3, are mapped to two different values. In this case, we have to merge the conflicting elements, C4 and C5 together, so that now they refer to the same thing. And this resolves the functional dependency violation. So it turns out this idea of functional dependency repair is very powerful. The same mechanism also allows us to express composable program analysis. Remember, we mentioned earlier that E-class analysis annotate each E-class with an abstract value, in Agalog, we use a function from expressions to the abstract value to denote such an analysis. Moreover, we annotate each function with a merged expression, which tells Agalog what to do when functional dependency viol is violated. So now suppose I have this table that tracks the upper bound of an E-class, and we merge C1 and C2 together. Now C2 is can canonicalized into C1 and we have a functional dependency violation because the same C1 is mapped to both two and three. And the merge expression tells Agalog how to resolve this violation. In this case, we just come in on the conflicting value. And this gives us our new upper bound of the expression C1 and resolve the functional dependency violation. 
So now we have seen the core mechanism of egg log. We evaluate egg log with three experiments. So first, we compare with state-of-the-art equality iteration frameworks. And because egg, because egg log's database likes architecture, we are able to use regional imaging for free, as well as efficient query evaluation algorithms from the database community. Moreover, Eglog is the first system that supports incremental equality separation. So incremental EQ set is known to be very hard, but we use a standard semi-naive evaluation from the dialog world to make equality separation incremental, basically for free. And the plot here shows the macro benchmarks we did. So the green line here uh, shows the performance of Egg, which is a state-of-the-art uh, EQ set framework. And the non, -incremental, the non incremental version of Eglog achieves a uh, three times 34 times speed up thanks to Eglog's database like architecture. And with incrementalization, we achieve additional speed up, and in total, we achieve 9.27 times speed up over Egg. So, our second case study is actually about Herbie. So, Herbie is a tool that optimizes the accuracy of floating point expressions. It transforms expressions into mathematically equivalent forms, but which has less floating point errors. It works as follows. Uh, Herbie uses a set of mathematical identities to transform the input into equivalent forms. And equality iteration will populate a big set of expressions. Then it samples this e-graph and extracts the expression that is the most accurate. However, unfortunately, not all identities can be expressed as synthetic rules and therefore Herbie's rule set is unsound. As a result, when unsoundness is detected, Herbie has to discard the result and roll back, and this makes Herbie's design substantially more complicated. We make Herbie's rule sound with program analysis over the e-graph implemented in Eglog. In particular, we define the interval analysis and the definability analysis, and this makes uh, Herbie sound in our re-implementation. So we benchmarked our re-implementation in terms of accuracy and performance, and the results show that our re-implementation in Eglog achieves a comparable accuracy and performance, but we do not suffer from the soundness issue in the original Herbie. And moreover, because now we don't need to worry about working around this unsoundness, we made Herbie's design drastically simpler. Finally, our last uh, case study is actually on the dialogue side, so people have been using Dialog for many program reasoning tasks, such as uh, point analysis, type checking, type inference. However, many advanced program reasoning tasks also require equivalence reasoning, such as the Stinskart point analysis and the Hindley-Milner type inference. And these analyses are hard to express efficiently in data log because Dialog uh, does not have this fast equational reasoning as in equality separation. On the other hand, such equivalence reasoning is supported in Eglog as a built-in mechanism. So we benchmarked Eglog and Dialog on the Stinskart analysis, and the results show that we achieve almost five times speed up over the fattest sound baseline. And this supports our claim that by supporting EQ set, we also make Eglog a better dialogue language. So to summarize, uh, Eglog unifies dialog and equality separation and goes beyond. By unifying them, we get fast equational reasoning a la EQ set, rich composable analysis a la data log, and a fast and incremental evaluation with techniques from the database community. Finally, as something not mentioned in the talk, uh, Eglog is a standalone user friendly language, and indeed we have a web demo where you can write your own Eglog programs. So you don't need to write your EQ set applications in an external language like Rust. And this is all because of uh, our language based design. And that's it. Thank you for your time. And I also want to thank my collaborators. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? You can uh, stand over at the mic, mic and speak. Uh, uh, hi, I'm Jagan from KAIS. Uh, I had a question on the functional dependency repair. So, what you said that when you detect a conflict, we merge the conflicting values. And you also said that to do this, we the we, we call a specific merge function. Um, so I, what I want to say is that is this merge function always determined or is there like a user choice for it? And if there's a user choice, is there like always a canonical form or does the user have to like think hard to think of a correct merge function? Right, so 
So in Eglog, there are two kinds of values. There are this uh, sort value, and this, there are these lattice value. And the sort value are these uh, data types, constructors, terms. And for them, the merge function is always a union. And for these lattice values, uh, the merge function is actually the join operator of some lattice. And this join operator is defined uh, according to your analysis. So for example, if you are checking the upper bound, then your join operator is a mean, and you can think of other lattices and uh, uh, their corresponding join operator. Okay, thank you. Hi, it's uh, Sam from Imperial here. Um, so one of the big problems we have in eGraphs is the actual extraction problem and kind of doing the sub-expression common elimination, things like that. So does the combination of data log, can we maintain anything that helps us at that end of the spectrum as well? So I think the extraction problem is still quite open because uh, like people have proposed different techniques and in fact in the eGraphs workshop like there are many uh, techniques for that and from I'm not I'm actually not sure if uh, Eglog can help and actually on the Eglog side it's actually slightly making the problem harder because in Eglog we are working with databases, tuples, functions and they are not terms but you can still extract a term in Eglog. So in Eglog, we do support this term extraction, but uh, you do have some slightly more implementation overhead. So any, any other questions? Um, okay, so then, actually, since we started quite uh, too late, so maybe we can stop here. Okay, thanks. Thanks to the speaker. And the next speaker, can you come? Oh, okay. So, uh, let's see.